Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Hey, you know, how long have we known each other? Like 45 years? Yeah. It only seems like 45 minutes. Uh, Underwater. Yeah. Like really hot water. Well, I wanted to tell you that uh, I don't like you. And, and you know, I didn't mm. like you from the first time I met you. How long did it take you to decide that? About 45 years. <laughs> which seemed like 45 minutes. <laughs> underwater. <laughs> well, today on the show, science. Science! Science! says that people decide these 12 things within seconds of meeting you. Ooh. Talk about judgmental. We'll talk about that next on Men Are So Smart. Hi there, welcome to the show. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. We appreciate you watching today. A lot of first impressions come from things we can't control at all. Our natural scent, how baby-like our faces are, and whether or not we need to wear glasses or are bald. For instance, men who have feminine facial features like thinner eyebrows and a pointier chin are more likely to seem trustworthy. I think I'm going to go thin my eyebrows out. That's not the that much that folks who want to give off a good impression can do about their facial structure, though they can change their body language by enacting small changes like smiling more, hmm. making more eye contact, look into my eyes, and nodding. Ooh, Nod yeah. I'm a nodder. Uh, keep scrolling, and you'll find out what other judgments people make about you within seconds of meeting you, Ronnie. Number one. Okay. If you're high status... Okay. Not if you're high All right. status, got but it. if you're high status. Okay, got it. So this study uh, in 2011 found that people wearing name brand clothes like Lacoste, Tommy Hilfiger, to be precise, were seen as higher status than folks wearing non-designer clothes. Mm -hmm. Perceptions did not differ on any of the other dimensions that might affect outcome of social interactions, the authors wrote. There were no differences in perceived attractiveness, kindness, and trustworthiness, just status. Wow. Hmm. That is so, so petty. I guess my GM shirt tells people I'm not high status. I think this is your Hanes. I think this is a Walmart Hanes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can figure out our status if you like. Yeah. Science says people decide these 12 things within seconds of meeting you if you're trustworthy. People decide on your trustworthiness in a tenth of a second. Wow. And you know something, Ronnie? That's true. I believe it is. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Princeton researchers found this out by giving one group of university students 100 milliseconds to rate the attractiveness, competence, likability, aggressiveness, and trustworthiness of actors' faces. Members of another group were able to take as long as they wanted. Their judgments were the same for most of the traits as the folks who only had a tenth of a second. Much of that judgment is based on things you can't really change, like more being more feminine, baby-like, and happy faces are perceived to be more trustworthy. You can alter your body language to boost others' trust in you. As Business Insider previously reported, try smiling more, leaning forward, looking people in the eye, and mimicking the other person's body language. <laughs> or not. Uh, this next one, they decide if you're charismatic. Well, I'm the charming oh, one. Oh, yeah. Remember? So this study from, in, uh, from 2017, University of Toronto, A, eh, uh, found that observers decide in as little as five seconds whether a person is charismatic while watching a silent recording of that person delivering a speech. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people were, who were attractive and not wearing glasses, uh, who were displayed, uh, and who displayed more eye contact, gave stronger arguments, were rated as more charismatic. In turn, those perceptions of charisma predicted whether the person appeared to be a leader, suggesting that gender and racial biases are at play when we determine leadership potential. Wow. Mm. Well, that segues right into this. So if your leadership material, a 2012 study, 
Researchers at the University of Miami and Duke University had people listen to recordings of men and women saying, I urge you to vote for me this November. Results showed that participants were more likely to say they'd vote for females with lower pitched voices. Oh. That was largely because the females with lower pitched voices were seen as more competent and trustworthy. Participants also preferred to vote for men with lower pitched voices, though it wasn't because they seemed more trustworthy. I see. I get it. And now I see what you're saying. The researchers say that findings could help explain why fewer women are in leadership positions. Think about that for a second. Huh? At the very least, they write, voice pitch is a physical characteristic that does not counterbalance social norms that foster gender inequality. You know, we have that uh, local broadcaster. I think her name is Kelly DeMarco. It is indeed. And, oh, man, she, I'm in love with her. She has a unbelievably... It's a, it's a deeper voice for mm. a woman, but it's a very attractive voice. And she has a mole right here. She does have a little... Birth, oh, I love yeah, that. A little thing going on there. Sorry. Yeah, I, she's, she's not hard to look at. I'll tell you what. Uh, this next one, people decide if you're promiscuous. How? Hmm... So this study found that women with visible tattoos ah. were perceived by men and women as less attractive, heavier drinkers, and more promiscuous than females without any ink. Interesting. Yes. Uh, this kind of owes to the stereotypes about women with tattoos. In Britain, at least, tattooing among women is often associated with uh, Ladette Le culture, the female equivalent of lad culture. Uh, which typically involves a proclivity for alcoholic beverages, sports, fast cars, and a plethora of men's magazines. Wow. What kind of magazines? I'm right in there. Uh, a more recent study conducted by the Polish researchers... Thank you. ...found that both men and women perceive tattooed men as more masculine, ooh, dominant and aggressive, but some gender differences emerged. Women viewed men with tattoos as healthier, while men viewed men with tattoos as more attractive. What? Uh, women also rated the tattooed men as worse potential partners and parents, whereas men did not. Ooh, so that's what ink, a little bit of ink. You know, my grandma used to tell me that tattoos were for sailors and hookers. <laughs> I loved her. <laughs> All right, so on our list today, Science says people decide these 12 things within seconds of meeting you. How about whether you're smart or not? Oh. A 2007 study led by Loyola Marymount University professor Nora Murphy found that looking your conversation partner in the eye was huge for your perceived smartness. Looking while speaking was a key behavior, they wrote, it significantly correlated with IQ, was successfully manipulated by impression managing targets, and contributed to higher perceived intelligence ratings. Wearing thick glasses and speaking expressively helps too. That's wow. that's, that's 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 sorry, my success right there. That's speaking yeah. expressively, not being smart. <laughs> uh, next one, people decide if you're dominant. I do that. So. I, I can tell. So part of this ring is very true with me. I pre-read it a little bit. Uh, this study from the University of Pennsylvania found that men with shaved heads were rated as more dominant than similar men with full heads of hair. Oh, that's sad for me and you. Yeah. And that men whose hair was digital, uh, digitally, re, digitally re removed were perceived as more dominant, taller, and stronger than their authentic selves. So at my work, my sergeant has, he shaved his head. But he is, he is very fit and trim. I'm taller than he is, but he seems, I, I have not really thought about it, but he seems tall. And maybe it is, maybe it's his shaved head. I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, I think the reason that most men shave their head is because they've lost the majority of their hair. Right. It doesn't have to do anything to do with masculinity or yeah. 
or um, what was the term they just used? Dominance. You're right. One of my close buddies, uh, he's, oh man, he's 15, at least 15 years younger than I am. Uh, and he started losing his hair early on and he just shaves his head. And that's, you know, again, like you're saying, it's because there's not a lot up there. So, yeah, there's a saying about that. Too. <laughs> there may, maybe me no smoke come out of the chimney, but there's a fire in the fireplace. <laughs> I don't know. All right. So on our list of uh, people deciding 12 things within seconds of meeting you, whether you're successful or not, if you want to look successful, get your suit tailored. In a 2013 British Turkish study, participants looked at photos of men in tailored versus off the rack suits for just five seconds. The guys in tailored suits were rated as more successful. On the evidence of this study, it appears, men may be advised to purchase clothing that is well tailored as it can positively enhance the image they communicate to others. Wow. Uh, now this one follows very closely on the heels of that. People decide if you're on your way to a promotion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this Canadian study, university students were shown photos of male models dressed in either business or casual attire. They were then asked questions about how that guy would perform in a variety of jobs. The results were stark. Not only were the crisply dressed dudes expected to make more money, they were expected to get promoted more rapidly. Well, you know what they say, Ronnie, dress for the job you want. Uh, okay. All right, so they decide whether or not you are adventurous. People don't just read into who you are from your appearance, but also from the way you move. A 2012 study says students were shown video clips of 26 other students walking some with looser gaits, some tighter. Just a few steps were needed to give a sense of personality. Hmm. Students equated looser gaits with extroversion and adventurousness, while the more clipped walkers were seen as neurotic. Wow, that's contrast there. Dang. Holy cow. That made quite a jump. That didn't it? <laughs> Uh, the next thing they decide is if you're dateable. Well, I want to hear this. Yeah. A recent study on online dating showed that users of dating sites quickly determine how dateable you are just from your photo, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I always use a fake photo on dating sites. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Fake uh, name. <laughs> appearing more extroverted, open to new experiences, emotionally stable, and likable boosted one success on the dating website, but seeming more ambitious and competent hurt women on the website while it helped male users of the website. That's interesting. Um, even after controlling for the text that folks provide in their dating profile, the researchers found that the impressions from the photo held true. Huh. These results uh, that photo-based first impressions may influence the decision to con uh, co contact a potential mate even after learning other relevant information about the person. On a, on a scale of 1 to 100, how many people do you think, Ronnie, on a dating site use a, a completely false picture? Oh, man, I haven't been on a dating site in quite a while. Well, it's been a month for me. <laughs> yeah, uh... I would have to say that probably three, about three quarters of them use 75. A, yeah, let, use a real photo. Oh, okay. I would say probably only about 25% because as soon as you meet somebody, it's going to be extremely evident that that's not your photo. Uh, you get to that point and then you ghost them. <sighs> yeah. That's what happens. So then if you're on the web, a dating website to begin with, then you're probably going to use a real photo. I, I mean, more times than not, I would think. Finally today, they decide whether or not you could be a friend or a foe. It's not just our eyes that help us form a first impression. Research from an Italian psychologist suggests how our sense of smell helps us decide if someone is a friend or foe. Wow. 
before I go on, this makes me wonder about security dogs, patrol dogs. It is indeed true and a fact, Ronnie, that they can smell fear or what is it they smell in a criminal that they're able to, um, is it stress? Uh, you know what? I don't think anybody's 100% sure, but uh, I know that when you're running away, you're obviously dripping these ferrums that a dog is picking up on uh -huh. okay. because they never, they they just don't follow a wrong trail. Uh, once they get on to the scent of somebody fearful and running, they're locked on. Wow. So smart. Yeah. According to the research, we determine if someone is in our family or social group by scent. Hmm. If someone smells familiar, it's a sign that they're like us and could provide social support. But if they smell too different, we think they might not have our best interests in mind. And you know something? This has been a really good article. I'm glad we brought it to our viewers. But I got to tell you, what we need to start doing is being less judgmental. Yeah. You know, I found as I've gotten older that some of the things, the morals that I have, I don't cling to them any longer. If it's a if it's a feeling that I've had from my past, I let it go. Yeah. Um, it goes for a lot of things. Intelligence, race, um, marital status. It doesn't matter, people. Yeah. It's what's inside the person that really matters. Even a smelly person deserves love. Right, Ronnie? You would know. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just saying we could all do better to be a less, a bit less judgmental. Yeah. I think we'll leave it at that, Ron. Yeah, because some of these things seem very trivial. Well, they are studies. Yeah. You know, and then they, I mean, they have to have a certain amount of people that they speak with in order to qualify for the study. Yeah. So much uh, peripheral stuff around them. In any case, thank you for watching today. We do appreciate it. We hope uh, that perhaps maybe you've learned something and maybe if there's something you'd like to share, then please do it below in the comments. Ron and I are pretty good about getting back to you. We do love our comments. We do, uh, and we go out of our way to make sure that you know that we've seen them. Sometimes we might just like the comment because we don't have time at that particular moment to reply. Right. But uh, chances are good when we do have that time, we will get back to you with something. Uh, also, please, if you haven't already done so, you know we're on a mission to get to 1,000 subscribers. We're just over 600. We need more people like you people who have minds like ours, people who are like thinkers. If you know some of those people, share our program with them. I am Lou Gallagher. I am Corbett Ryan. And we will see you on the very next Men Are So Smart. Don't judge me. Too late.